Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Here's some tips and tricks for making gear blanks. Gears need to be very precise to transmit their torque and not uh, bind. So there's a process for making donut gear blanks. Donut gear blanks are gear blanks for gears that have a hole in the middle. Uh, they're not integral to a shaft or anything and they're quite common. They need to have a bore for the shaft, sometimes with a keyway if they transmit torque to and from the shaft, sometimes without if they are reversing gear. The bore must be concentric to the outside diameter and you want to face the width to be consistent with the front face and be parallel to the back face. A chamfer on the front and back is also a required feature. Let's take one slide from our gear school showing a very abbreviated set of process steps to create a gear blank in one operation. This example shows 11, 11 steps. The steps are face the front, turn the OD, chamfer the front side, spot drill. Okay, let's stop here and examine this spot drill step. Why not just use a drill and a reamer? At this point, it depends on a few things, but in our case, where most holes are less than half inch or about 12 to 13 millimeters, spot drilling is important. As you know, most twist drills will make a tri-lobed hole, and if it wanders, the reamer will follow this path. The best practice is to spot drill to avoid this. It removes any small leftover bump at the end of the bar and starts a straight new hole with angles that a twist drill will honor. The process is to drill an undersized hole, but it is not going to give us a nice round hole. Then we can do the final size boring process. So now you're asking yourself why drill at all if we're going to bore anyway? Well, the easy answer is the boring bar needs a hole to enter and you want to minimize the material removed by the boring bar to reduce tool pressure and cycle times. Finally, we have a central bore in our gear blank so we can move on to the next step. Next, we chamfer the backside followed by the cutoff tool. At this point, you can tune your lathe and cut it to size in one go or you can make uh, the cut with stock to leave. The disc will be large, but a further grinding pass on a surface grinder can achieve a high tolerance in a short period of time. Unfortunately, this does require movement to another machine and another operation. The keyway can be broached in another operation as well. It could be done in the lathe if it's properly equipped, or it could make, be made with a shaper or even with a rotary broach in some cases. Deburring may be minimal if all of your tooling is sharp and they are used at proper feeds and speeds. The goal is to do all these steps in a lathe and remove the part without any need for deburring. Just take it to the hobbing machine directly. Another feature not shown is a hub. This is part of a gear mainly used for the purpose of having a threaded cross hole to attach the gear to the shaft with a set screw. And the list of features can be many. Here are a few dual hubs cross holes and tooth roots, webbing, lubrication features, internal splines and other shapes, and more. The fancier the blank, the more operations tend to be required. There is some good news for the hobbyist only needing one gear. A modestly well-equipped small manual lathe can get this done. It's not the lathe, it's the operator. For large part counts, the more axes the lathe has, the fewer times the blank gets moved around the shop for another operation. Most lathes are XZ axes, which is very limiting, but all of the key tolerance features of OD, ID, and face thickness can be done in one operation. Other features will need to be moved to a mill or grinder and thus the processes may have less precision. Swiss lathes are especially good at high park count jobs requiring multiple axes. Some of the more capable models come from Sugami and have up to nine access capabilities. All right, here's some nerd notes on GD and T and inspection. Now that we've talked about this with commonly used shop language, let's reveal some more technical terms for the inspection of the gear blank. And these technical terms are called geometric dimensioning and tolerancing or GD and T. Concentricity is difficult and really not the best way to describe or measure the part. Surprise! In fact, concentricity was removed from ASME in 2018, but it is in such widespread use and remains on so many part plans that you will probably see it going forward. 
From a technical standpoint, runout is equal to concentricity plus circularity. And runout can be measured by a simple dial gauge while rotating the part. It's a powerful and frequently used measurement technique because it can be done in the machine as a check on the process. Circularity is a measure of how circular a part is, or rather how it is not ovaled or some other shape. Circularity can be checked with a height gauge and rotating the part at various angles around the circle on a, on a granite block. These angles usually being at least 90 degrees, but preferably 60 or even 30. This is done after the part is made and removed from the lathe. While it is important and required if on the prints, it takes much more effort. So, what's the two-tenths club? As you work on ever-increasingly valu increasingly valuable projects with increasing tolerances, there are steps along the way as you improve your machining skills. First, graduating from being within 5 thou, which is a hobby engineer, to 1 thou, which is, you know, things are starting to get serious, to the two-tenths club. Gears spin, and they are not less than or very, if they are not less than or very near two-tenths, you will be able to hear and feel them making oscillating noises and vibrations. So, most gear shops will tell you you need to be within two tenths for good gear manufacture. Now, there's still more. We only outlined an 11 step process to making the gear blank, but as you can tell, there's a few other pieces to the puzzle here. Here's one more from way beyond. When the process gets automated, and cycle times get important and other techniques start to creep into the machining process. Chips are the enemy of the manual machinist and this is also true in the CNC world. Stringy chips are bad because they can wrap around everything and will eventually start to affect part finish tool performance and even stop the machine. Make a small slot on long cylinders and then all the chips will be small while turning in the interrupted cut. Only the final passes will have stringy chips. This is typically where most of the material removal occurs anyway. For more, or to get the most in-depth look possible, please join us at our next gear school. I hope all these tips and tricks and pointers help you when you're making your gear blanks so that they turn and transmit torque nice and smoothly and you get it done the first time properly. So hopefully these tips are helpful in your shop. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and we'll talk to you soon. Please subscribe.